With Simply Right checking from Santander Bank, making a deposit, withdrawal, transfer, or payment each month will waive a monthly fee. Now, if only some other annoying things could go away, like wearing socks with sandals, or people who spoil the endings of movies, online lists that make you view them as a slideshow, um, earphones that always get tangled up in your bag, mounds of snow that don't melt from sidewalks until mid-June. Let's see what else? Oh, cab drivers who say they don't accept cards when they really do. What? Uh, the machine is busted. Sure it is. Introducing Simply Right Checking from Santander Bank. Make a deposit, withdrawal, transfer, or payment each month, and rid yourself of the monthly fee. Sign up today at SantanderBank.com/simplyright. Qualifying transactions do not include fees, rebates, and adjustments posted by Santander. Santander Bank NA, member FDIC. Blog Talk Radio. Hello, welcome to episode number. Wow, this is wrong. Fifty of Thyroid Nation radio talk show and <laughs> podcast. I'm Dana Bowman, founder of ThyroidNation.com. And I'm Tiffany Milan. It's of Grateful Garden Nut Biz. Today we are talking with functional medicine practitioner, Dr. Will Cole. He's a, like I said, functional medicine practitioner with a virtual <laughs> clinic. He offers webcam and phone consults for people all around the world at drwillcole.com. you got to check him out. And he's also in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. So, huh. He's also, uh, he, I think it says he's a he's a mind body green wellness expert. So that's kind of cool. I love that site. That's very cool. And you know what? I love his site. It's very pleasant. I do. Too. It's so seriously pretty, isn't like it? it's it is very pretty. It's a very well done. It's beautiful, simple to I the point. I love I it. I love his site. I do too. <laughs> and it's funny too because Travis and I, Travis always, my husband always helps me do the the radio show meme. And um, he's like, are you going to send me his picture? And so I sent it over, and he's like, well, he's a well-enough-looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well-enough-looking guy or something like that. <laughs> it's a like, well, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trav. <laughs> I know. He's like, well, no, let me look at his picture. It looks good with the side. It looks clean. It is. And I was like, yeah, right? It's a very Funny. healthy, I, I love it. I really do. I love the, the way it's laid out. I love the simplicity of it. I love the fact that it's packed with great information. I love the picture because it's a very, it's a wellness picture, man. It's, it's, it is. He's a picture of health, so it's a, that's a, always a beautiful thing. But we are incredibly excited to talk with him. I, we could talk about him all day long. <laughs> well, let's get him <laughs> on here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, if you have missed any of the Thyroid Nation podcasts, you can easily listen uh, and access them at your leisure in the Thyroid Nation radio archives. So Dan and I have had the pleasure of, of interviewing some amazing people, fabulous guests like Dr. Holtorf, Hypothyroid Mom, Mary Shulman, Susie Cohen, Isabella Wentz, Lisa Carnahan. And really, those are some of the bigger names that people will recognize. That's one of the reasons why we mention them. However, you know, we have talked to some guests that literally, like maybe no one has heard of, that, that were just power-packed with information. So, um, you know, make sure to check them out. The archives are all there for, for easy accessibility on ThyroidNation.com in the radio tab. Are you laughing at me? You are laughing at me. <laughs> You're a turd. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm laughing at you because you said, you said Lisa Carnahan. <laughs> I did? Oh my gosh! I know. <laughs> okay, so I'm just not just just take me with a grain of salt here today. <laughs> it's Super Dr. Bowl, right? I've got margarita on the brain. <laughs> That's right. We love Dr. Jill Carnahan. She's in she's in uh, Colorado, so she's probably rooting for for the Broncos. So I just thought that was funny. That's what it said. Oh my right god! There, so that's right, funny. huh? <laughs> totally. <laughs> Okay, make sure to also check out the lineup of uh, innovative guests we have scheduled coming up. We have yet to talk to Andrea Nakayama on accident. It just things happen. And uh, Trevor Cates, Dr. Lisa Maturo, Viva Rom. Um, there's just a whole ton of, of great guests. A couple even surprises uh, that I haven't even told you about that we're going to be talking to. I know. To, so you're, try you're keeping things from out. me these days. If you were closer, I, know. I would strangle you. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Uh, I have to uh, long distance phone strangle you. All right. Okay. Well, it looks like Dr. Cole is with us. So, Dana, let's get this thyroid nation thriving. I love saying that. It's just fun. It. <laughs> no, Hi, Dr. No, Cole. Right? You're with us? 
Hi, ladies. How are you? Good morning. Or afternoon. You... Yeah. I was going to say. Sometime. It's morning somewhere, right? It's right. right. <laughs> You're in Pittsburgh. I'm in Atlanta right now, but yeah, I'm based out of Pittsburgh. What you're, are you you're at a, a conference or something, right? Yeah, we're here with the Institute for Functional Medicine here in Atlanta. So you, as you ladies know, you never stop learning. So I'm here, kind of learning from the best minds out there in functional medicine, and and uh, kind of deepening my knowledge on on the body and on health. That's very cool. Awesome. Yeah. And, I heard and your kind me. words about my website, by the way, and and my and my, just everything on, on the on the site itself. I just I really appreciate it. Just kind words. Oh, it's a beautiful you're so site. It is. I love the way it just it it has a it's a, got a very feng shui to it. It's very um, what am I trying to say? Like understandable. It's easy. Re- I just love it. I really do. Honestly, I do too. It's, it's, I do too. It's, <laughs> and 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 I and we're also very picky. But my husband brought it up too. He was like, "Well, look at this. This is." I was like, "I've already been there. I've already seen it." Yeah, we, we all love it. Well, tell him thank you too. Uh, yeah, that's a real. I'm flattered. Thank you. All right. Well, you're welcome. All right. Okay, so we're a little giggly today. We got to settle down here. <laughs> got to settle down here. It's Super Bowl Sunday, and there are that's people right. out there that are all about Super Bowls and. And drinking margaritas, <laughs> so we gotta we gotta tone it down and start learning and talking here. Here we go. Let's let's, <laughs> let's jump into uh, to some of your good stuff. Let's get some good questions going for him, Tiff. I I have a I have an initial question, Doctor Cole. Tell us what what your purpose and passion. How did you get into medicine, functional medicine? How did you get here into the into the world of healing? We yeah, love to hear people's question. journeys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I grew up in kind of a a family that really was passionate about alternative wellness. And uh, I remember growing up, my dad was a healthcare practitioner as well. I remember uh, Dr. McCullough coming to his office as a young kid and just being inspired by him. And and then growing up, kind of seeing, okay, I want to I want to do this for myself. So I went to Southern California University of Health Sciences in Los Angeles and really was around a lot of different thinking in the wellness wellness world, the educational world there. And it kind of was a series of events after that, kind of an organic process of meeting people and just allowing time to happen. And it kind of evolved with with really jumping into functional medicine. Batiste Karazian, who I think is one of the most you know, prolific functional medicine practitioners out there. We went to the same school out there in in California, and he was a big, pivotal person in my life to really dig into the functional medicine. And, yeah, so then I just kind of grew from there, you know. I really, I love my practice and really being able to talk to people all around the world, not just locally in Pittsburgh, but about 40% of my patients are, are outside of Pittsburgh in different states and countries, really bringing functional medicine to normal, everyday people all around the world. So it's my love of health. And then really on the back end of it, kind of personally, my family, seeing what autoimmunity had done in my family with type 1 diabetes and different inflammatory problems, it really kind of, I wanted to fill in that gap and and find solutions for them and then I saw how well it worked, and I really kind of wanted to put it into practice with my patients. Very cool. Very cool. We love hearing people's journeys, like how they ended, whether they were ill themselves or, like you said, with your family or just, you know, mentors that they were exposed to as a child. It's just it's always so interesting to hear how people ended up, you know, ended up in this in this wellness journey. So that's very cool. So yeah. let's jump into... The differences between functions, this is huge. So the differences between functional medicine and mainstream medicine. And then we'll piggyback that with another question. But um, let's start with that. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I think now more than ever, functional medicine is more popular. It's definitely on people's radar, especially if they're going through problems like like thyroid problems or autoimmune problems. I think now more than ever, we're at the tipping point of people understanding it. Um, When I first 
started practice, it wasn't even that long ago, but 2008, um, almost 10 years ago, people didn't know what it was. I mean, it just was almost, um, it was blasphemy to kind of say the things that are now right. commonplace, you know, that, that these chronic diseases can be reversed. You can dampen the inflammation against these problems without medication. I just think that before that just was unheard of. And now it's more mainstream, and I think we can kind of thank Dr. Oz in part to that and and, and the Internet and blogosphere. I think they're really permeating modern culture. But um, the main differences between functional medicine and mainstream medicine, and the first thing is that we interpret labs a little differently because, you know, on, on the labs that we all get from our doctor, we have what's called a reference range, and that that reference range or that normal interval range is 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 based on a statistical bell curve average of the population of that particular lab. So that reference range will vary from lab to lab. Other than cholesterol and vitamin D, which are the both they're standardized, the rest of them are variable based on that population of that specific lab. People that typically go to labs are sick people. They're people with health problems. They're people that want to find out what's going on in their body, or they're, you know, managing a medication with their doctor. They are sick people. So there's a lot of people that are symptomatic. They're going through health problems that they can't find out why they're feeling the way that they do, and they go to their doctor and their labs come back normal. And what your doctor is, in effect, saying is if you're having symptoms despite normal labs, what you're saying is you're a lot like the other sick people that make up the population of this lab because they know instinctively what they're going through is not normal for them. I mean, these, these health problems, these unexplained myriad of issues that can happen when the thyroid is not working well or when the immune system is not working well can oftentimes not show up on standard labs. So a functional medicine kind of interpretation of that, we use a much thinner range within that larger reference range. So this is where healthy people are at, basically. Where are healthy people that are living long, long healthy lives? Where are they at? And they're in a lot thinner range than that larger reference range. So that's the first thing we do different. And the second thing we do different is that we run more extensive labs, which I'm sure you guys have covered on your show before. But we're looking at underlying issues that can complicate thyroid problems and autoimmune problems, that triggers the the other components to it, nutritional deficiencies, underlying functional issues like leaky gut syndrome or candida overgrowth or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or adrenal fatigue, things that can mimic low thyroid um, mm-hmm. but is actually something else. So we want to really get a comprehensive view of what's going on here. And the reason why it's not typically ran in the mainstream setting is not because, you know, functional medicine practitioners are, you know, smarter and they, and you know, some of the best brilliant minds are in mainstream medicine, but their training is to diagnose a disease and match it with a corresponding drug. If it doesn't change the treatment, the medication, uh, why would they run the lab? It's because the end result is still going to be that same medication. So it's just superfluous lab testing within the mainstream setting, which is really dictated by, I mean, we get into the politics of it, by pharmaceutical industries. But the reality is, uh, from a functional medicine standpoint, there's so much you can do to, when you deal with these underlying issues so you can move on with your life. And then the, the third thing we do different is we really we realize that everybody's different. There's no one size fits all to getting someone well. And when it comes down to it, you can have five, you know, a handful of people that have the same diagnosis, but the way you get them well, that their journey into health is going to look different probably in many ways than the next person. Because I've seen really good things that sound great, healthy things, healthy foods, healthy natural medicines flare some people up, work great for other people, and then you don't notice a difference in other people. So I really want to take it down to, okay, what is working for them and then coach them and clinically monitor them, educate them so they can ultimately do it themselves. But if I had to say those are the the three main differences between functional medicine and what we call mainstream medicine. Okay. Uh, There's the first (laughs) question. Yeah, sorry about that. My (laughs) long-winded answer. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. and it's so important. What you said is so is so accurate and so important. I mean, there's just, you know, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think functional <laughs> deals with the person as a whole. I know I'm having a, I'm stuck in the flower field moment, but it's so Me true. Too. Like functional and integrative moment, uh, medicine is is very person specific. Like you use labs for guidelines, but you still listen to the person. I think that's a huge failure of of mainstream medicine. Is like well, everything's fine. So you should be fine. You're like, well, I don't feel fine. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> yeah, they're huge. told, you know, you're just depressed. Here's an antidepressant. That's why you're right, feeling right. the way that you do. Or, I right. mean, who wouldn't feel depressed when they're going through these issues? 
or you know, <laughs> you you just need to lose weight, and or you, and that's the reason why you're going <laughs> to see them in the first place because you can't lose weight, or right. you know, you're just getting older, I and mean, that's really common too. That many of my patients were told you're just that's the reason why, and you know, it's they something that I, I read a lot about, right. and I. I tell you know want to tell people and get that out there is that just because something is common doesn't make it normal, you know I mean feeling lousy, a growing medication list is super common, but it's really abnormal and you don't have to settle for it and just think well I just have to take this pill and see my doctor in six months. There's actually so much you can do and while we live, you know the dichotomy of the time that we live in right now is that while chronic problems, autoimmune problems, thyroid issues are higher than ever, we also know more than ever about how the body works, what works, what doesn't work, and and options people have in the mainstream setting. I mean, functional medicine, like I said earlier, is more mainstream now than ever. So it's really up to the individual to say, okay, educate myself. This is my body. You cannot depend on the insurance industry or your doctor or the government for your health and really taking responsibility for that. And I think that's why shows like yours is so important, really putting, giving that patient that, the education and knowledge and network of people to let them know they're not alone and what they're going through. And that is the whole premise behind the show. So thank you. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Cole. We really appreciate it. And I have to tell you, I'm just going to have to send everybody a little email or something you know, before the show to let everybody know what a flower field moment is. So earlier <laughs> when you finished, when you finished, it was a flower field moment for us. It was like we need one of those little buttons that you push that you hear the angels or whatever, and they, oh, you know, because <laughs> what you said resonated with us. And uh, we were just kind of absorbing, you know, what you were saying, and we just needed to pause and just kind of let it sit for a minute. And, and it happened in one of the be- beginning uh, shows that we had, and it was kind of funny because people were like, well, you really don't want the, there to be dead air, you know, on dead, the radio dead and on the shows and stuff. And we were like, well, we can't help it. We just need to sit here. We were with both in that same. <laughs> so we Last developed a, a, a tag for that of what it would be called. I want to. I, oh, I love it. Point out, it, you know, one thing that we hear all the time is when people's blood work comes out normal. So your explanation of that was was, but when it comes out normal, they're more afraid of walking into their doctor and having everything come back okay, because they're like. I want something to be able to explain Wrong. how I That's feel, right. and I want to be able to to be able to see that, or have my physician or practitioner see that on paper. Hey, look, something's wrong. So people can actually get depressed just by the simple notion that they've gone to their doctor and they're like, "Well, everything looks fine, so you should feel fine." Yeah. Like I, but I don't. But I don't. So right. awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm so personally incredibly grateful for, you know, the functional medicine model and, and, and for everything that you guys do because it, it really gives people hope for the fact that, hey, listen, if this may not show it, this may. Or, you know, and then you look at the, the problems that adrenal fatigue and candida and things like that, how that completely wreaks havoc. <laughs> and yet, you know, mainstream medicine doesn't really put much stock into that until it hits the fan, you know. You're like, but yeah. that could take me years of feeling miserable before you know, before we're in that position. So yay for functional medicine. So let's talk yeah. about, it's a perfect lead into how would functional medicine approach a thyroid issue? And then how would this be different? How would functional medicine approach, uh, you know, what would look like a thyroid problem differently than, than mainstream medicine? Yeah, uh, that's a good good question. So, I mean, the mainstream model of of care when it comes to thyroid problems is, I'm sure many of your listeners know this already, but it's running TSH, a thyroid-stimulating hormone. The interesting about TSH is it's actually not a thyroid hormone. It is a brain hormone, a pituitary hormone that kind of speaks to the thyroid. The thyroid, like many, you know, most of the, the endocrine or hormonal system, is that it's just a kind of lazy employees, and they only work when the brain says work. And the TSH is kind of that voice, that, that screaming voice or silent voice or normal voice telling the thyroid to work more or work less, and, and that's what governs the thyroid's production of the thyroid hormone. So um, kind of going back to the interpretation of the lab uh, for TSH, you cannot hang your hat on one lab. I mean, we are all more complex than just one piece of 
paper and one number on that piece of paper, and we really have to look beyond that. And TSH, there's many thyroid problems that won't show up just by looking at TSH alone, or meaning that you'll have a quote-unquote normal TSH despite having a myriad of different low thyroid symptoms. And the thyroid hormone, it is a thyroid receptor site on every cell of your body, and no other hormone can claim that importance. So if your thyroid's not working well, nothing's working well. And, um, yeah, so the interpretation of the TSH is important. So typically, again, it will vary from lab to lab, but a typical average of the average of TSH is about 0, 4, 5 to 4.5. That is based on a statistical bell curve average of the people who go to that lab. When you take hypothyroid patients out of that equation, the actual healthy, functionally optimal TSH is somewhere around 0, 4, 5, to 2.5, that's the upper limit of it. So there's people that are 2.5, 2.6, all the way up to 4.5 that are told they're normal but are not normal when it comes to optimal health. So they're going to feel the effects, so they can feel the effects of low thyroid function with that functionally higher TSH. So we need to interpret TSH actually using the healthy range, not just an average of sick people. And then the second thing we need to do is run more extensive labs to actually find out what's going on here. And again, this is more mainstream now more than ever, but we want to look at the inactive thyroid hormone, which is T4, but we also want to look at the conversion of T4 to T3, which is the biologically active gasoline that actually your cells use. So T3 has to be converted from T4 in your liver and in the gut. So in functional medicine, we want to look at liver function, we want to look at gut function, and then we want to look at all the other hormonal implications that influence thyroid conversion because the brain adrenal axis or what's commonly referred to as adrenal fatigue when the brain adrenal axis is not working so well, those cortisol spikes and fluctuations can impact that thyroid hormone conversion. So we want to look at all the different factors that help your thyroid work or not work. So uh, we run more extensive labs when it comes to that and um, really tailor it down to what we find on those specific labs and that's different from person to person. Gosh, and just just even starting with the gut, I mean, let's just start there. It made a huge difference. <laughs> like, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah, 20% that's of the thyroid hormone is converted in the microbiome, so you need the presence of, you know, good bacteria, bacterial diversity in the microbiome to really have optimal conversion in Q4 to Q3 on top of the fact that hyperpermeability of the gut lining, I mean, that's, or leaky gut syndrome, that's where major triggers for autoimmune thyroiditis, which is, you know, upwards of 90% of cases in the West are autoimmune in nature, or Hashimoto's disease being the most common, Graves' disease as well, where it's really not a thyroid problem even to begin with. It's the thyroid's just victim of the immune system attacking it. So, you could make your TSH look pretty on a piece of paper all day long, but if your immune system is attacking your thyroid, you're not going to feel well at least for long. You may feel well for a little bit until you get another flare-up and thyroid storm. So you really have to deal with those upstream source root issues, which is that immune autoimmune response. Exactly. Let me ask you a question about liver, you know, because mainstream medicine views, you know, basically liver enzymes being problematic when they become high, but can you explain to people how liver problems may not necessarily appear uh, in those high enzymes, you know, sluggish liver, things like that, that could potentially uh, pose a problem for the thyroid as well, just with that conversion like you were explaining? Can we talk a little bit more about the liver for a second? Sure, sure, yeah. So that's about 80% of the conversion of the thyroid hormone is in the liver. And, yeah, you can look at AST, ALT, GGT, these liver enzymes, and oftentimes you will see them functionally high, meaning they're not outside of that reference range, but they're kind of a hair's breadth away from being outside of that range. And, you know, with that reference range, if you move up three numbers or two numbers out of that range, you're not automatically then having a problem. You're either trending towards disease, which is outside of that range, in this case the liver enzymes, or you're trending towards optimal health, which is in that functional range. So most times you'll see the writing on the wall, so to speak, years before they, those liver enzymes actually leave that reference range. So we want to look for functionally elevated liver enzymes, but we also want to look at the total health history here. I mean, is metabolic syndrome going on there? Is there insulin resistance? High triglycerides is one of the first 
enzymes on a lab, it's like the Paul Revere of metabolic syndrome, it'll precede diabetes for on, on average around 10 years. So you can know around a decade before when you see these functionally high triglycerides, and again, that's above 100, that's norm, That's the average for the reference range for triglycerides is around above 150. But if you have triglycerides above 100 consistently over time, that's going to... In, that's going to indicate some sort of insulin resistance, which is in the liver. And those, that liver is sluggish, and you're having problems there. So looking for a low HDL, high triglycerides, looking for metabolic syndrome, that's liver stress. That sluggish liver will become fatty liver disease, will become type 2 diabetes if left unchecked. So we want to look at all the sort of nuances that govern total health, but specifically in the conversation we're having now, and how is it impacting your thyroid. Love, love, love it. Huh. Love. I'm telling you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, oh I like the way you explain gosh. things, Dr. Cole. You made it sound, you know, you made it easy to understand. I was right along with you, so thank you. Cool. You're welcome. <laughs> and we, we have uh, those moments where we're like, uh, you know, when people are so smart and they explain something at a level where the average person can't understand it, we're like, that's a that's not a good flower uh, moment. Let's just put it that way. So we love the fact that you. I don't want to say dumb it down because people aren't dumb, but they're obviously not, you know, educated at a level that you know certain people are. So what seems very logical to one person for another person can be very confusing because you don't understand. You know, so we love it right. when people or, explain things when we can understand. Or they, it. Could have, <laughs> they could have brain fog. You know, there's yeah. lots of reasons, yeah. right? So, oh, yeah. You know. Totally right. Yeah. The deer in the headlights really? look. They're like, I know this is really important. Hey, I've been there. I know this is really important, yeah. and I know I need to understand that, but I'm just, right now is not a good yeah. time Did for it. the brain to be yeah. able to <laughs> to get all that. <laughs> but, you know, I, it's funny. Like, a large part of of my practice in functional medicine is education. You'll never, like, it's something that I've learned that you'll never – reach everybody because some people think you're speaking too technical, too sciencey, and the other people are like, that's so, like, something I know about. You just do your best to try to, like, make it practical and make it work for people. But, I mean, that's important. I think people need to know what's going on in their body, you know, and, and knowledge is really power when you when you understand it. Mm, very true. There's not a, there, there, there wasn't enough uh, emphasis, I don't think, for me growing up um on on your body and how it works and how it functions and all that stuff but i think our kids i think that that they'll be better off than we were as far as that goes because we're we're teaching our kids better mm-hmm. well you just you just look for example you just look for example uh, the reason i'm saying is because it came up several times in this last week but for women with hypothyroid problems that are holding on to weight right they think okay if i don't eat then i won't gain extra weight when it actually is complete antithesis of what will really happen, you know, and then they create blood sugar problems because they wait too long to eat, then they're ready to consume a car, you know, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and so if, if we actually came forward and, and, you know, educated people, so yay, yay, Dr. Cole, on that really is not working in your favor. I, I can't remember, was it Dr. Holtorf that mentioned the study where they fed women like 579 carbohydrates that were hypothyroid and they actually yes. gained an average of two pounds? Who was that that yes. we were talking to? I think it was I Dr. Think it was. And so when people hear that, they're like, oh, my God, so not eating is not a good thing. It's like, no, you just flip wow. your body going into survival mode. Like it, it thinks you're out in the middle of the forest with no food. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's a- it really, I mean, it's down to really what, when it comes down to anything in health, what works for one person isn't right necessarily for the next person. And it's something we're talking about this weekend in Atlanta with the Institute for Functional Medicine. Is that there's all these studies, and like, well, it works great for these people, but and the next people, it like, didn't work at all. And there's all these medical literature that's kind of contradicting it, totally, the right? next study. But when it comes out, it just comes down to what's right for you. I mean, we know a lot pudding. about st- science, but, I mean, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, avoid the things that don't work for you, stick to what does, and keep doing it. That's really what it comes down to. And a big <laughs> part of my job is, like, finding out that roadmap for the individual. And it, I try not to have any bias as to, like, how I think I'm going to get someone well because it could completely be thrown out the window when we put something into their life. So, I mean, yeah. It's everybody's different. Everybody's, everybody's different. So different. We stay 
We say it on every show, Dr. Cole. Everybody is so uniquely, wonderfully built and individual, and no two people are the same. Neither uh, should be any kind of medical protocol to help them heal because there's just no way one method is going to work for everybody. So, And I love the fact that you have repeated that several times like so you can tell that that's a primary focus for you is that you know everyone is so different so you probably you know approach all of your patients like just a blank canvas you know let's see how we got to this point and that's so cool i wish everybody started that way rather than just say this doesn't work or this works or because dana and i see it all the time you have people that thrive on paleo then other people that feel like they're dying and you know i mean it's just to say there's a yeah. blanket, you know, just across the board is just that's just such an ouchie in in my opinion, anyways. So let's yeah. dive into some yeah. more factors. You mentioned the brain adrenal. I'm like dun dun dun. No one ever brings that up. You know, people no, bring, they don't. bring up the gut, but they never bring up and cell receptors. You know, very little bit, but really not. You know, all the time because people can have a huge thyroid problem. Right, Dr. Cole, if they have, you know, a plenty of thyroid hormone, but it's not necessarily, it's not actually receiving. Those cells aren't ready to get it. So can you talk a little bit about brain adrenal and cell receptors as other factors that, that play a role in thyroid physiology? Sure, sure. Yeah, so the, the brain adrenal axis, or what's, you know, technically referred to as the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, so basically the hypothalamus of the brain speaks to the pituitary gland of the brain and the pituitary gland speaks to the to the to, to the adrenal axis. So just like we had the brain thyroid axis, so the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis, we're talking here about the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis or HPA axis. So when you have dysfunction of cortisol, what what's cortisol? Cortisol is a hormone that your adrenal gland secrete only because the brain tells it to and it's supposed to be higher in the morning and then slowly kind of curving its way down in what's called a circadian rhythm down at night, and you need cortisol lower at night so your melatonin level can come up and you can have a good night's sleep. But cortisol, you know, I'm sure most of your listeners kind of have a connotation that it's bad. You know, cortisol makes you gain weight, you hold weight around your middle, but the reality is, as with any other hormone, it's not good or bad, it's just is and if anything it actually is good but you just want balance 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 cortisol is great you need it for proper blood sugar and blood pressure fluctuations for proper weight for inflammation bringing inflammation levels down in the body you need it for many many different reasons so if when we this is a test that we run for patients all around the the world now is really saliva test you do it at home and you uh the ups shipping labels and then you send it to the lab and the lab kind of gives us this information, what is that brain-adrenal axis issue going on here? So adrenal fatigue is not an adrenal problem as much as it's a brain problem, and the brain is not speaking well with the adrenal glands. The cortisol is high when it should be low or low when it should be high or high all the time or low all the time. It's causing havoc in people's lives. It, it can mimic low thyroid function, so it could be just a mimicker of it, and you're tired and you're, you can't lose weight, you're not sleeping well, You get headaches. I mean, there's a myriad of different issues that um, can be both adrenal axis issues as well as thyroid axis issues. But it also influences the conversion of the thyroid hormone T4, the inactive, to the active T3. So by, you know, high levels of cortisol throughout the day or really low levels, you're going to have inhibition or an overconversion of T4 to T3. So an underconversion of T4 to T3, that's what's called low T3 syndrome, where your body's making the thyroid hormone all right, but it's not being converted in the liver and the gut because that enzyme in the liver and in the gut is being inhibited because of the cortisol fluctuation. But also, we can have the opposite problem, which is the overconversion of T4 to T3, which you would think, you know, this is awesome because they have all this active thyroid hormone. Why, why wouldn't I want that? It's just like uh, free, you know, armor thyroid for your body. But it's actually not not a good thing because it's too much of that hormone. That balance of that thyroid hormone is out. So you can that's going to overwhelm the cells. Your, every cell of your body is going to have too much of that T3. It's just going to get burnt out of something called thyroid resistance. So that's the receptor sites. Every cell of your body can be burnt out from the thyroid hormone because there's too much of it. So you're going to get thyroid resistance. Those thyroid receptor sites are dulled and blunted, can't accept the thyroid hormone like it should, 
because it's too much of the cell. It's similar to insulin resistance. So same mechanism. Your body's producing the hormone, but the cell can't receive it. So you're going to have low thyroid symptoms when it's not a thyroid problem. It's not even, you know, thyroid resistance isn't always necessarily a brain problem either, but it's actually a cell problem. But you can start seeing the full spectrum of where this implication, you know, can happen. It can happen all the way in the brain. It can happen in the conversion. It can happen in the cell. It can happen in all of those or one of those. So you really kind of have to find out for the individual what's going on in their body. So I have to pick your brain for somebody that I love, that I just want to mm-hmm. hear this. <laughs> yeah, if you a have a client with a low cortisol issue in integrative or functional medicine, or I should say in mainstream medicine, that's a medication issue. They're very consistent with that, and they say that they'll be on it forever. Is functional medicine, do they approach somebody with a low cortisol issue any differently? Any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, and how important it, yeah, is do. it to address that, Dr. Cole, a low cortisol issue? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who is give this me a, friend? Give me a bullet, please. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let yeah. it go. Uh-huh. All right. So cor- cortisol... Uh, low cortisol or, you know, depending on who you talk to in the functional medicine world, they can be stage three of three adrenal fatigue, looking at a three uh, kind of spectrum of adrenal fatigue, or stage seven, which is a little bit more nuanced in the, in the, the description of adrenal, brain adrenal axis dysfunction. But low cortisol is the kind of the end stage of a brain adrenal axis dysfunction. So we would want to ask, I mean, the whole kind of premise of functional medicine is what's the underlying mechanism as to why that happened in the first place. So, yes, is the use of cortisol needed sometimes? But it should, yeah, absolutely. But it should not be the first course of action. We would want to ask the question, okay, why did you have low cortisol in the first place? What's going on here? Kind of. It, so our job would be, again, finding that dysfunction. Maybe it's the brain not speaking well. So oh, we why? want to stimulate the brain using adaptogenic herbs, using precursor hormones, using, precur- using herbs that can be acting as precursors in the body. So that's our goal. And uh, try that first. Try to stimulate the body to do its own job and not rely on some exogenous hormone like cortisol or, or it can, you can really apply that to any other hormone, but in this right. case, cortisol, let's get the body to do its own work. And then maybe later on, if it's still not working, maybe you want to get precursors to cortisol, maybe DHEA, uh, looking at that as well. But also, we, if, if end result, if none, none of that works, then maybe cortisol supplement is needed. I love it. Huh. So you go the pathway instead of the Band-Aid. I love that. God, why is yeah. that so uh-huh. difficult for so much for medicine to wrap their head around to that you can't just trump the body, you have to find the pathway of the problem. That's so frustrating. <laughs> so yay. Yeah. It's so frustrating. Exactly, yeah. Well that's what we're here for, right? I mean that's what functional medicine's here for, hopefully. I mean now the Cleveland Clinic has its own functional medicine center. So if it's not gonna be you know, I think in another ten years we're gonna be pretty doing pretty well with getting this information out there. Right, and and starting at different levels, like you said, what I love about the at least invasive, right? Try to to trigger and stimulate the own body to do the own body. I'm creating a new language here. The body's <laughs> own pathway to do it right before you just all of a sudden add cortisol. So, and being able to help people along that journey, right? You would see a different clinician in different steps, would you not? I mean. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes I think mainstream medicine is too smart for the job they're doing. It's like, uh, oh, God, give me a good example. It's like trying to, to uh, I don't know, see a biological diversity specialist before you see a, a pesticide specialist. That's a really bad yeah. example. But what I'm yeah, saying I, is I, sort I, of, I hear what you're saying. It's sometimes help it me, is Guys, just... help me with an example here. Like we're going to, yeah. the, to the super smart, like way smarter and not even capable of handling most of our problems. Uh, yeah. But does that make yeah, sense? I, mean, I think when it comes down to it, I mean, the, the standard model of care, when it comes to the education of Physicians now, medical doctors, DOs now in, in, in America, is that they're not treat, they don't taught anything as far as clinical nutrition, how foods impact your body. It's very basic. They refer out to dietitians, which is 
basically pointless in most cases in the mainstream setting. They give, you know, pretty horrible advice when it comes to getting healthy. But the reality <laughs> is that, you know, they're training. It's almost the analogy that I would have is it's, it's like asking complex. a gardener for, like, m- advice on your car. It's like Thank you. It's completely different. <laughs> Thank you. If you want advice on what medications to take, go to your doctor. But if you're going to ask doctor. him, what foods do you think I should eat to impact my health, they're going to say, well, it has nothing to do with it. Or go to the right. dietitian because right. I don't know. Unless they really seek out education of functional medicine, look, there's like over right. 300 doctors downstairs in the hotel that are here learning this stuff. But guess what? Right. Even if your doctor wanted to do more within the, state, within the setting, they, you know, I mean, there are doctors, friends of mine that work in the VA or work in hospitals. They want to do so much more for their patients, but the system says no. You get X, right. Y, and Z. It's the medications they're already on or want to put you on. And there's no other options for you. So it's not even necessarily an individual doctor's issue. Except if they, even if they wanted to seek and learn about functional medicine, the system has their hands tied behind their back. They have their hands right. tied. Yes. Thank you. I wish uh-huh. I had a bullhorn for that simple premise. <laughs> People don't understand that, you know. Um, yeah. No, and, and, you know, we see a lot of people, you know, villainizing doctors and all of that. And, um and so it's frustrating for us too because you know we want to we want to use the bullhorn and, and let them know the same thing. I mean, a lot of them, you know, their hands are tied behind their back. There's not a lot they can do. Uh, now, of course, yeah. there are those doctors that 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 don't do you right, and and we see a lot of that too. But um, just for what you were talking about, I uh, totally agree. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. two classes of functional medicine doctors here right now with, with IFM is that I'm talking to them and they're, there's the people that are actually in private practice and able to do these things and make impact change in, the, in patients' lives. And the patients that are in the mainstream setting are all like so frustrated because they're learning all this stuff, they know about it, but they can't even do anything. So they're struggling with, right. I need to leave the system to even make this useful. And that's sad. I mean, you have some that of the most brilliant minds and they can't even do it. It's like they're literally being. Uh, it's almost a crime to get someone healthy. Yeah. It's 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 it's, it is. it's very un, it's very unsettling to me. Right, and we're just talking about AMA guidelines. We're not necessarily even talking about, you know, um, anything that. Boy, that just went out the window. I looked at the Restrict- looked at the, <laughs> my. I have a very old dog. Okay, so I have to tell you, she's and she's <laughs> eighteen, almost nineteen. She's very small. And she's getting ready wow. to she's getting ready to make her journey. So every time she oh. moves, I'm sitting on my bed and I'm watching her. And every time she moves, I'm like, I had this great thing to say, man, and there it went. It went to the dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> you talk about <laughs> 19 years <laughs> old. That's dog. a very well aged dog. That's awesome. Seriously, That's she is a little terrier, and I have to tell you, it's so funny, Wait, right? It's because not pickle is it? Is it pickle? <laughs> No, it's Pickles a puppy. No, Pickles my little black chihuahua. He is so funny. But no, Princess is a she's a terrier mix, and her name is Princess, and and um, she's Aww. Mama's girl. But anyway, she can't see, she can't hear, she eats like a pig. She loves to eat, right? So everything she does is by her sense of smell. So she can smell me get she can smell me get home, and she'll she'll come to the door, and she's like waddling, and it's really bad because my desk is is actually opposite from my office and so every time I get up from my desk to go into my office she'll waddle behind me and then if I just went to grab something and I go back to my desk then I get halfway past her and then she turns around (laughs) I'm like you wish you could just say princess it's only going to take me 30 seconds to grab this just don't move you know but everything she does is on her sense of smell god bless her I mean she has been the most amazing dog and she's getting ready to make her journey, you know, and I've trained my children so well, right? They're like, Mom, she's going off to a better place. She's, you know, not going to suffer anymore. And here I'm like, I'm going to lose my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, sorry. Remember, that, remember that 1990s <laughs> film, uh, or 80, I don't know, All Dogs Go to Heaven? Remember that cartoon yes, back in yes, the day? Yes. All right. Yes. yes. She'll well, be okay. I actually, I actually found her at a four-way stop, someone uh, – I, we assume had just opened their car and let her out. Like maybe she barked too much or whatever her problem was. Because we put on all kinds of signs all over the place. No one ever got her. So when I picked her up, because she was sitting in the middle of this four-way stop at night, and just ever since then, you know, she's just been like glue. You know, she's just been. I think Rainbow. animals have such a oh. such a different perception. That yeah, they really do. They really do. But that was September. 10th the day before september 11th so 
I woke wow. up with this puppy on my bed, eight and a half months pregnant, you know, giving back, get, about to give birth to my first child. And, you know, Dr. Cole, long story, but, you know, lots of kidney issues since birth and, you know, was never really supposed to ever be able to carry a child. So everything was very eggshells. Wow. And I wake up, someone wakes me up. I don't remember what time it was, but it was very early, and I'm watching the towers fall. And this right. little dog just kind of walked up next to me and nestled in next to it, like everything's going to be okay. It's all right, you know. It was just—it's uh. a very unique relationship, right, that we develop yeah. with, uh, or some people, Definitely. you know, with animals. Some people don't. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. there was my thought. Beautiful. It went to the dogs, literally. Oh, Princess's, well. Princess's <laughs> that's that's awesome. <laughs> okay, so I want to know: um, Are you there? <clears throat> just since we're off topic, I want to know: since, uh, since you're at the conference, <laughs> are you? <laughs> I mean, you know. Do you know lots of people there, or you know, are these colleagues of yours that you've met before? And you know, tell us a little bit about the conference since we're off topic for just a moment. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm. I obviously functional medicine community is a pretty small community. It's growing, but I mean, more or less, you see people that you've seen in other conferences or different seminars. So yeah, it's a it's an awesome group. I mean, one of my not to name drop or anything, but like one of my like good friends and someone I just admire so much. I just I love her, Terry Walsh. She is. Um, she's not here. I thought she was going to come here in Atlanta, but she's not going to make it. She didn't make it this time. But um, missing her, uh, we normally hang out on these these little things. But um, yeah, I mean, we see we see definitely people that we know, and it's fun to get out and talk to people. Well, Someone just commented that said, country. Christina um, Christina McCullough just commented on my Facebook page and said, um, "Thanks for adding me. I'm listening deep." To you and Dr. Cole, excellent, very impressive, and he explains so much everyday language. Awesome, how cool, right? I mean, you know, technology—it's it's just fantastic, right? I love it. Yeah. We love you, Dr. Yeah. Cole. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> we do. So, um, okay, so back to thyroid. Is that what we we're talking about today? I don't know. Were we? <laughs> I think, I think we've so. covered a few things. I yeah. think we've yeah. covered a few things. Okay, okay so Grace, let's see where we're I've going. got a good one. I've got a good one. Okay. So, and okay. this is super, and this is something that uh, Dr. Cole had mentioned too, but number one prescribed drug in America, Synthroid, right? Seems like everybody is developing thyroid problems or abnormal thyroid function or symptoms of thyroid problems. What's going on, Dr. Cole? What do you think? Well, I, I mean, I think what it, when it comes down to it is that it's, it's we, chronic disease as a whole is really growing so thyroid is just victim, one aspect of that. Um, it is on all hormonal problems. And, again, the majority of low thyroid problems in the West are somewhere in the autoimmune spectrum. They may not be full-blown Hashimoto's disease, but they are having some activity of their immune system against the thyroid. Um, it's something that we see a lot where they're not, they're having some level of abnormal antibodies against the thyroid, meaning they're, Antibodies are basically little flags for destruction. So they're not the actual destruction, but they actually go and tag whatever tissue we're talking about for the actual cytokines and the natural killer cells to go and destroy the tissue. Basically, your immune system thinks your thyroid or any other tissue in the body is a virus or bacteria that is autoimmune disease. So uh, I would say that's a big culprit for the growth of low thyroid function. The reason why levothyroxine or, sy or synthroid is the number one drug is because of the rise of autoimmunity because autoimmunity is what's growing by leaps and bounds astronomically. So um, that's, that explains, I think, in part, a large part as to why synthroid is so widely prescribed is the rise of autoimmune conditions. And right. it's important to kind of, kind of look at the fact that uh, there's three stages of autoimmunity. Silent autoimmunity, meaning you have positive antibodies, but you're not symptomatic. Stage two is autoimmune reactivity, meaning you're creating antibodies and you don't feel well and you have these unexplained symptoms. And there's stage three, which is autoimmune disease, meaning you have had so much destruction of your organs, the tissue, whatever it may be, the thyroid or the gut or your brain or your muscles, wherever, that it's then diagnosable and you're labeled with an ICD-10 code and given a medication. So the reality is that there's so many millions, millions, millions more in that stage two autoimmune reactivity, meaning they feel lousy, they don't feel well, but their doctor says, 
there's nothing wrong with them. Their doctor says you're just depressed. Your doctor says you're just getting older. All these unexplained symptoms. Um, there, and there's no research to show that all of those stage 2 autoimmune reactivities are going to become stage 3 autoimmune diseases. They may just stay the rest of their life feeling lousy, hopped up on medications to dull their symptoms. Um, so we really have to look at two, because I really feel like that is a large majority of people that have these thyroid problems and uh, autoimmune spectrum problems are in this stage two. So we run on our patients oftentimes when it's, you know, when it's, uh, when it's based on their health history, if it's appropriate, we would run uh, Cyrex's uh, predictive autoimmunity array to look at things that can take years before they ever show up and degenerate it enough to be then labeled as an autoimmune disease so we can find out years before, okay, what's going on with the immune system? Is the immune system attacking the brain? Is it attacking the thyroid or the gut or the or the joints or whatever the case, the stomach, whatever the case may be? Um, and it really gives people insight into why they feel the way they feel. They're not crazy. It's not just in their head. It actually is measurable on labs. It's just not the basic conventional labs that they're running in the doctors. So uh, to answer your question in a long way, I think that's what it is. We have to kind of look at autoimmune spectrum problems as a main culprit to thyroid dysfunction. Hmm. That's a good, that's good. So now I've got to go to, let's Uh just say we have these super self-motivated health seekers that are going to heal themselves with Dr. Google. Thoughts on that? (laughs) <laughs> I love Dr. Google. I use Dr. Google. I use Dr. There's Google? Another, What's wrong with Dr. There's Google? There's nothing wrong with Dr. Google. I, have, I want patients to inform themselves. I think that's great. I mean, I am all for it. Patients find me by Dr. Googling. So I, I don't mind that. But I, and I, you know what? I know and I've met them before where they have a type A personality. They mm-hmm. typically... Have a, they're married and they have a, a spouse, whether it's a man or a woman. Their other spouse is working to provide for them while they're sick, while they're not doing well. So they just immerse themselves into their health problems. They have like they know everything. They know more than their doctors about these health problems because they've just had to be their own health advocate because they've been let down by the mainstream setting. So I have seen those people do amazing things for their health uh, on their own without any intervention from from doctors, only by doctor Googling. So, um, but the, the what I see even for those people uh, is that they love to pass the baton onto a group of people that understands why they're going through, what they're going through, and they can have that sense of relief that they don't have to figure it all themselves and they can really rely on people that do this for a living and do this full time to really uh, have an objective perspective of some things that they are missing and if they're stuck at a plateau we can kind of take it to the next level so it's not a matter of like not being smart enough or not being informed sometimes it's just people needing people and people needing an extra pair of eyes to really kind of guide them in the right direction Two heads are always better than one, and one being very well educated is always a good addition. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like I sometimes I'm like I'm, but with some of the patients we get, I'm like, you guys are so brilliant. Like our top patient base are nurses, nurses, and you know different healthcare practitioners. I'm like, you guys are probably smarter than I am, but they, it's just they get the they get the the um. They admire and respect having a health coach, and they they realize it's not a matter of who's smarter. It's that really who's immersed in this and can have a good pair of eyes to kind of guide us in the right direction. Right. Oh, I love that. Right? How how interesting does that make your practice, I bet? Wow. I've never heard anybody say that before. That's fantastic. Yeah, it is very interesting. Well, and I think sometimes, you know, uh, tunnel vision can be – you know, a little bit scary because you may think you know, but sometimes it's just, you know, you're so immersed in that you didn't consider the possibility of something else being an etiology or even an addition to what you, I mean, it's, yeah, it, it's just always yeah, it's better absolutely. to go, yeah, very much so, yeah, I, you know. Yeah, it's it's really a fresh perspective on whatever you're going through 
after you've done the Google thing, after you've tried your best on making some good stuff, that uh, good good lifestyle changes that are good for most people, if you're still stuck at a plateau, it doesn't mean that you failed. It doesn't mean that you should get frustrated with yourself. And I think people need to give themselves more grace and this whole healing process more grace and realize that, you know, it's I've seen some of the best minds out there, the best top of the line, best minds out there in health, stuck at plateaus. And I have to think, well, if really the top of the line people are stuck, then us ordinary people are going to get stuck sometimes too, and it's okay to reach out for help. Right. Awesome. Yeah, I like that. Awesome. It's okay to reach out for help. That's a that's a major flower field moment right there, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and to have a to have a, a, a functional practitioner that actually will listen, you know, so many people are stuck in mainstream medicine, Doctor Coles, I'm sure you know, with insurance limited, you know, abilities and so they're told that they have to see this particular person, you know. They maybe not mm-hmm. necessarily can afford or think they can afford because there's many you know, functional practitioners that will actually work with people to, to you know, to to be well and not necessarily just have mm-hmm. to, you know, come up with a chunk of cash in the beginning. And yeah. so I think sometimes people are just, they feel like they're so trapped. Like I have no other choice other than to do it this way because it's like their their hands are tied and they don't realize that, yeah. that there are many other possibilities, uh, you know, and practitioners that are willing to work with them too, you know. But, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very much so. All right, so I have a burn-in question for you regarding medications because you bring up, uh, you know, for everybody listening, people who are on medications, if you know someone on medications, no one ever talks about this. We all talk about the fact there's certain, you know, certain people that need um, medications, and I love the way you blamed that with the whole cortisol thing. You know, there's things you can do, and then if it doesn't, then obviously – you know, but you have this help. this pathway that, that, you know, there's a starting point and then there is that. So no one ever talks about the dangers or the risks of taking medications. And this is a this is a slippery slope in the thyroid world. So can you yes, tell is. us a little bit about, um, you know, what some dangers and risks of taking medications are for people? Yeah, sure. I, and I just want to touch on real fast before I answer that is just uh, what you – said about people feeling alienated and they don't have any other options. I mean, I just want to really tell people that I've been in practice since 2008. 100% of our patients are working class normal people. And something that I still hear a lot is that, well, I could never afford that. You know, it's, you know, it's not covered by insurance. You know, I, only the rich can get healthy and, and afford functional medicine. I haven't seen that. I really haven't seen that at all. Nobody's gone broke getting healthy through functional medicine in our office. Uh, And I only say that is that just to get rid of that myth that you kind of, this is for like... Oh, it's such a preconceived notion, yeah. Yes, of course. Yes, depending on your health insurance for health is like depending on your life insurance for life. I get that point. But Mm. it's the reality is that... I had a patient tell me that once. I don't think it was his quote, but he said, depending on my health insurance for health, it's like depending on my life insurance for life. He said, if I depend on my health insurance for health, I better have good life insurance. That's That's right. Uh I love it. It's great for trauma care, right? I mean, we have it for a reason. If it's like, God forbid, you get a surgery, insurance has its place. But ultimately, if you're depending on that for your health, you're going to have fun. You might be in some trouble. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, you really have to real, and patients get it. Patients realize they have to kind of take responsibility for their health, but they've got to want it. But just to answer your question about the um, the medications, I mean, our kind of criteria for anything that we take, whether it's a natural thing or a pharmaceutical drug in functional medicine, is what is our most effective option that causes us the least amount of side effects. So for some people. I mean, and for some people, they're alive because of medications, and that fits the criteria of being their most effective option, causing them the least amount of side effects. But most oftentimes, pharmaceuticals don't fit that criteria. They have lots of side effects, and, I mean, you just have to watch a drug commercial um, to see that. I mean, and they and they they aren't very effective, meaning you'll be on them forever and ever, and, and typically in increasing amounts. So we have to... Always look at, okay, what is that most effective option causing the least amount of side effects? And in most cases, 
it's not going to be a pharmaceutical drug. So we want to look at those root mechanistic issues. What's the underlying issue? Nobody's sick from a medication deficiency. So we want to find, okay, what is this root <laughs> underlying issue that's causing me to go through these problems? And then stimulate the body to do its own job or support the body to do its own job. And then later on down the line, if you've maxed out every other thing, then maybe this medication are going to fill in the gap and you need to be on them. Like Synthroid or Levothyroxin or Armathyroid and Thyroid, these are prescribed thyroid hormones. If your immune system's destroyed your thyroid, if you have Hashimoto's disease uh, and you can't produce enough thyroid hormone on your own, Armor or Nature Thyroid or even Synthroid may be the best option. But guess what? It's just a piece of the puzzle. It doesn't negate all the other things you have to do to modulate the immune system and dampen inflammation and heal your gut and all the other things you have to take responsibility for. But the um, it, hopefully that answers your question, is that it's, it should be used, but it should be used with more caution and a little bit more education on why are you taking these things and then what's the end result here? Just keep taking them until you die? I mean, ultimately, most of the medications people are on, they don't have to be on because, because when you deal with these underlying root issues. Right, and I, I love and, you know, and just even the – sorry, go ahead, Dana. Well, I'm just going to say I love I love that you said that because, you know, medications, you know, they definitely have their place, but we do need to be more educated. We need to be asking the questions because I, I, for one, didn't and, um, and kind of beat myself up for it a little bit every now and again. I uh, was just put on levothyroxine or similar to that here in Costa Rica and uh, for a whole year and just didn't even question, didn't ask, and – you know, I think I suffered other issues because of that. And so, you know, I think the education and, and just being cautious and learning um, is important. So I, I like that you said that. Yeah, I mean, it has its place, but I think just a little bit more education. I mean, it amazes me how many people take medications right. on a daily basis and they don't even realize why they're taking it right. or they don't even realize Nor the side effects. Right. They don't even realize they don't, they're just taking it. It comes from a good place. It comes from a place of I trust my doctor. So I, 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 you should be able to trust them, and it's really not a matter of you have to distrust them. It's just ultimately this is your body, and you need to make an educated decision about what you take on a daily basis. Right, and there's also ownership. You know, there's also ownership in that for people who they may not necessarily want to eat differently or do the. You know, it takes work to heal your body. It takes uh, personal choices and. You know, there's a lot of responsibility in that. There are some people who are like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do that. So, yeah, you know, I know. for yeah. those people, right, then pharmaceuticals are ideal. And then there's people who, like yeah. you said, are, you know, uh, they have no other choice and then and, and they choose to do that knowing that, um, you know, that that's just par for the course too. But what I love so much about what you have said in particular, Dr. Cole, is you know, the traditional medical model really was originated in a first do no harm. And they've kind of mm-hmm. lost that whole thing where functional mm-hmm. medicine and integrative medicine is pulling that back and saying, like, I love the way that you explained it, and I wish I had a bullhorn for that, where, um, you know, going back and starting with a pathway problem, how did you get here, right? Because for some people that do want to invest in their health, do want to take on that personal responsibility. They might not necessarily need that medication, you know, if vitamin mineral deficiencies are ruled out and the reason for that and gut health and all these other things, they may not necessarily have to use, right? In in a, a ideal medical model, that is the way it would work. You would deal with right, everything absolutely. like you said. And then if you yeah. do need the medication, you can justify the use for it rather than just saying you know, uh, without ruling out other problems. I mean, traditional medicine was designed to rule out a series of problems, and they're not doing that anymore. They're just not doing it. They're just, like you said, you've got depression, you're going to go on an anti-medication rather than actually looking for a pathway that might be causing that. I mean, I love functional medicine, and I hope that that becomes the new norm in the future. I hope that becomes the medical model entirely and in different levels. Like you said, you might have clinicians that are trained in nutrition and these other things, and you don't see that MD that's trained in those, you know, uh, really fundamental, well, not fundamental, but you know what I'm saying, different, it's a different doctor. That's a different doctor for a different problem, in my opinion, you know. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, I think there's, like I said, some people that are alive, 
because of, of medications, and there's no no denying that. I mean, it, but it is that it, those are those instances, and there's just so many other instances where it actually isn't isn't needed if you deal with the root issue, you know. And I, you know, I when it comes down to it, is that patients really just need to uh, find out about these things and take responsibility for their health and give themselves forgiveness for the things. It's like when you know better, you do better, and you can't beat yourself over. I wish I learned about these things in the past. I wish I would have done things differently. Yeah, we all, that's welcome to being human. <laughs> it's just the way right, that it right, is. Right, 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 um, right. But ultimately, now that you're learning these things, you can start putting these things into practice, and you have to do something different to see different results. Hmm. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. That's a bad moment. I love that. Mm-hmm. So how about, let's talk about some natural treatments or, or you know, some tips that you would give our listeners um, for that. Any natural treatments and, and, you know, dietary, anything that you have to recommend for, for people who may be suffering for, uh, from a thyroid condition or something that mimics a thyroid condition. Just good, healthy, general yeah. Just take it. <laughs> yeah, because everybody is different. It's kind of hard for me to say specifics, but right. I think and I was trying to the, I was general, trying to go around yeah. that, and I wasn't doing a very good job. <laughs> the generalities. The generalities is that you have to. It's diet, food, medicine. Let's just call it that. Food medicine is key, and we go back to like you said first: do no harm. And Hippocrates, the Hippocratic oath. He said a lot of things that really functional medicine practitioners are are doing. It's like science is catching up with antiquity. Science is catching up with really the father of modern medicine said from the beginning, Hippocrates. He said, first do no harm. He said, all disease begins in the gut. And he said, let food be thy medicine and medicine thy food. So this is Mark really I. nothing new under the sun, <laughs> oh, but we're kind of bringing it to moment. the... T- <laughs> yeah. It's just we're bringing that to the 21st century and we're kind of functional medicine. I think are like the, the disciples of the resurgence of what always was. And, and, and Ooh, healthcare. I love that. So, mm-hmm. so the, I, I, I just feel like that's what it comes down to. It. It's like you need to use food as medicine. You need to find out what food medicine plan works for you because maybe gluten-free grains work for you. Maybe doing a paleo diet makes you not feel so good. Maybe it's just an adaptation period and you need to kind of burn through it and kind of really detox from the grains that maybe your body is a little bit addicted to. So it's really down to the individual and, like, is it is it detox symptoms, is it die-off symptoms, or is this just not right for you? Um, and I think that's really where the coaching comes into play because you can have a tough time for a little bit, but should you push through or should you kind of go back to what you were doing because you can cause more problems for yourself? So I think it's good, finding a good food medicine that works for you. Is it a, a paleo diet? Is it a Mediterranean diet? Is it just a real food diet? Who knows? But you need to quit eating the crap and start eating real foods, and <laughs> and stick with whatever works for you, and um and then he, fundamentally, like Hippocrates says, all disease begins in the gut. Science is going to really agree with him. And modern science is going to agree that around ninety percent of all chronic diseases that we see today begins at least in some degree in the microbiome, in the in the mm-hmm. gut gastrointestinal system. So we need to look at that, look at the underlying issues, not just from a GI standpoint, so some people may be saying, you know, I don't have any gut issues. I don't have constipation or diarrhea or IBS. You don't have to have gut symptoms to have gut problems. And right. many you can have brain issues underlying. that are completely gut-related, right? But right. 85% yeah. of neurotransmission in the gut is in the gut. And you just yeah. have brain symptoms. <laughs> right. Yeah. doesn't and necessarily have to be a body problem. Did y'all just say the uh-huh. same thing at the same time? I think y'all just said the same thing at the same time. <laughs> well, I think that's such a great point, Dr. Cole, because so many people, just like you said, I don't have gut issues. I go potty fine every day, blah, blah. But gut issues can manifest themselves very differently in different people. So it can really be a, a sort of a mystery, you know what I mean, for it people is, who yeah. say, I don't have any gut issues. You know, I can't tell you how many times we've run stool labs and people are like, well, why are you running this? I'm coming to you for anxiety, depression, or thyroid problems. And the things that the lab finds on their, on their, on their specimen that they collect, we find parasitic overgrowth, yeast overgrowth, like candida overgrowth, bacterial imbalances, digestion and absorption issues. They don't even have any noticeable gut issues. They're coming into us for anxiety or depression. I mean, your gut is your second brain. 
Um, 95% of your serotonin is made in your gut, is stored in your gut through the gut-brain axis, your vagus nerve. Your gut in, impacts your brain health and vice versa. So we want to look at the gut for many different reasons, not just from a GI health uh, reason. So we right, wanna, there's uh, lots look, of information it, in poop, right, Dr. Cole? Poop is a huge piece <laughs> yeah, of information. Yeah. Seriously, like, I'm it's half joking the, about it. Honestly, half I, I know I'm... I talk about poop all day long, and it's normal for me. But <laughs> I realize when I'm talking it to like family members, they don't think that's like as cool as I think it is. But it's <laughs> the, the microbiome is pretty, and uh, uh, I love it. I could talk about it all day long. <laughs> right, and if we had to really, de- if we had to really put our finger on, how, let's just start with the thyroid community. If we had to put our finger on how many people have had any kind of stool evaluation. I don't think it would be a very high no. percentage. No, me neither. No, no. 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 And, you know, until they have a drug for it, then they'll they'll test everybody for it. <laughs> a poop drug. <laughs> poop drug. So speaking of poop, and and obviously, obviously, I'm you know making a half joke of this, but it it really is an enormous piece of information. I'm going to make myself laugh just from that. But what is your favorite? What is your favorite? Do you have a favorite stool testing? Is it as simple as a yes. hemocult, or do you have a favorite laboratory? What is Dr. Cole's favorite My, testing? I, I, have no, I have no attachment to this lab. I do not work for them. I'm not endorsed by them. I'm not, I'm not endorsing them at, you know, from a financial standpoint. But I do uh, really like Doctors Data uh, two- or three-day collection. Their comprehensive microbiome test, I think, is one of the best ones out there. So okay, it's a and lab that's Doctors in Data? Is that like a specific lab? Yeah, it's actually a specific lab, Doctor's Data. So it's a lab that okay. we you need a doctor. Ooh, but I've never heard anybody just, mention that one before. So no, me cool. neither. Yeah, it's Doctor's Data. They're out of Illinois, Chicago area, I think. So I mean, it's a lab that we drop ship to patients all around the world. We have patients in Central America, there in Costa Rica, patients in Europe, patients in the United States, um, patients in, in Asia as well. So it just comes to their house. They do a stool collection on day one, and day, day two. If we're going to do day three as well. And then the FedEx bag's in there, and they just are responsible oh, that's to get it cool. to the lab. Yeah. Oh, so you I find love out that. so much stuff. So much stuff. Uh, you get, like, what? in about four weeks, you find out all this stuff that you never knew existed inside your body. And you know, you, most times people aren't feeling it in their gut, but it's super crucial to their thyroid health, to their autoimmune health, to balancing their immune system, and just their overall vibrance of them overcoming these health problems. See, I'm telling you, it all starts with the poop. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, that is a yep. you, seriously. I I think it, he just wanted to say that word again. <laughs> <laughs> Are you making fun of me? I am making fun of you guys. I'm surprised you guys stopped laughing. Y'all are just, I, y'all are poop, I thought you were just going to go into the church giggles. <laughs> I thought no, you were just going to keep. <laughs> no, y'all are y'all are poop nerds. I'm over it. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I As just you read an article see. about someone. I just read an article about someone, um, you know, uh, transplanting someone else's poop <laughs> stuff and into their whatever, and, and they're healthier fecal now. Transplant. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Bacterial therapy. Yeah, for fecal transplants. Yeah, it's something. It's not approved uh, by the FDA in the United States, but people actually go to the UK to get this done officially. But within the United States, you can do it yourself. So if you want to give yourself a fecal transplant, at least at this point, the government isn't regulating that. Huh. Oh my God. <laughs> right. I, I told can't you. Even... See? I know. You do. That's, that's, that's a whole other discussion. Now we've freaked out everybody that that's say, listening. That's a <laughs> We're going to schedule you for a poop show. <laughs> Seriously. <Yeah. laughs> no, like it once you so can important. find out, I think, it, I think it, honestly, and all joking aside, it's an extremely important subject that really oh. should get more more attention. We were talking about prenatal and, and uh, care and things like that with uh, Dr. Brighton, and I just think that this is a whole different, like stool is a very important subject that never gets talked about, never gets talked about, rarely gets tested unless you go with an integrative or functional practitioner. And it's a really mm-hmm. important, really important information. So maybe yeah, we'll I do mean, that, the lab, that, that doctor's data lab is used by the Cleveland Clinic's Functional Medicine Center. Clinicians there advocate it. They use it in their personal practice. I mean, this isn't some hokey, you know, alternative quack lab. This is like very reputable lab that has high specificity as what's going on in your gut. 
Right, and Cleveland Clinic, isn't that uh, Dr. Aviva Ram, Dr. Hyman? We have some fairly yeah, Dr. large Dr. names Dr. in there. Yeah, 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 very yeah. reputable. They're changing the face of medicine. I love it. They, yes, are. they are. Yeah, it, they are. Poor Dr. Ram, though. She's taken quite a hit from people in the AMA. Gee whiz. I mean, they're just... I don't know what's going on. I, don't, I have, not, have not heard of that. She just takes a lot of bucking, you know, mm-hmm. um, from other physicians, other MDs that say that she's, you know, walking a very fine line. I think what she does is amazing. I really do. Yeah. I, because I just she think approaches more... it from a... <clears throat> Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think the more the functional medicine grows and that kind of that voice gets louder, I think equally proportional, directly proportional to that, you're going to have the blowback of the mainstream yep. saying, rejecting that. So it's going to get more volatile, I think, but that's how things work throughout history, and I think this right. is no difference because the system's unsustainable. I mean, from many, Growing many pain. different factors. Yeah. yeah, so it is. It's growing pains, and it's not just from a medical uh, health care standpoint, just from a total governmental financial standpoint. Something's got to give, and I think functional medicine is kind of part of that resurgence of being logical and being practical with what with your health. Absolutely, absolutely, and she's well well fit for the job. She does it doesn't even phase her, which I love it. No. I just love it. She's, she's like, oh, okay, whatever. So let's talk about this. <laughs> she doesn't um, doesn't phase her. She doesn't miss a beat. Nope, she doesn't. Nope, nope. Well, we are we are going to let you go back downstairs with your three hundred cool cool peeps down there and uh, <laughs> learn some more good stuff. Dr. Cole. All right. And we're going to have you back Please. on the show. We want to talk. I would we love talk to more. anytime. We would love that. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Tell, well, thank you for having how, me. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah, tell everybody well, how thank you. Um, we can, they can find you. Yeah, so go to drwillcole.com, so D-R-W-I-L-L-C-O-L-E.com, and we have a subscriber list. It's free, and you can just kind of stay in the know. We give giveaways and health tips, and we have a video course coming soon. So it's I'm super excited cool. about it where people can really kind of get a full – an hour-long functional medicine course. It's called, the first one's called Heal Your Hormones, Brain, and Gut. So it's, it's about all the things we talked about today. So it's coming soon. If you subscribe, then you'll know about it first. It's not quite ready yet. But, yeah, drwillcole.com, as soon as it's ready, the video course will be available to everybody that's listening. Very exciting. Cool. And I love your site. Oh, my gosh, yes, truly. Yes, we do. It's, yes, it's, we do. Sounds, sounds really stupid, but it's very soothing and therapeutic. It's very... I don't Thank know. It you. just screams wellness. It was nice, nicely yeah. done. Well, yeah. I appreciate that. I I, I worked on it with uh, the guy that's always done my website since I was since I graduated. I got a friend from church, and he um, yeah, he does a great job. I tell him what I want, and he makes it happen. Because I'm not a tech guy, but he he makes it look good. So he made it happen. Yes, he did. It's screaming you wellness. Him, I love you it. Tell him Lisa. You tell him we said good job. And it was so great, yes. great, great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you and, so uh, much. Yeah. Well, thank have you a great, so much. Well, you too, and we'll guys. I'll, I'll, see you. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. See you later. Okay, okay, Dr. Cole. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye bye. And he was awesome. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, one of these days I'm going to get on a stinking plane and I'm going to go, but I love the fact that he does a lot of consultations through Skype. You know, he has, he makes it very clear that there are no limitations, which I love that, that I love that. Oh yeah. I mean, I just, I just, I Googled doctor's uh, data lab right away, right when he said it, I was like, okay, well, you know, if it can be done, it can be done. So I'm telling you, we're going to have a poop conference. I I know that sounds really stupid, but we are. And you go ahead and you ask your doctor, you say, I want a stool sample done. I want a comprehensive stool sample done. Don't leave until you, until someone agrees to do that. So either that or just call Dr. Cole. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Better yet. (laughs) That's right. Just call Dr. Cole. I'm in rare form today, baby. You are. You are. You are. Well, he was he was great fun, and he's been fabulous. We've had um. fun Facebook chats back and forth, and uh, he's just uh, been great. So that was really wonderful to get to finally talk to him. Yeah, I love the way I love the way he explained that. I mean, that doesn't that just seem like it would be so logical, right? It does. To yeah. rule out other things before you just start dispensing pills. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think there's probably 
dare we say we throw out a percentage, but there's probably quite a bit of people that are on thyroid medication, right, that may not necessarily have to do that, right? Let's go out on a limb here. And that's a big limb for me. Yeah, I know. You know know that, right? So you're you're, a big proponent of conventional medicine. I get it. I know. know. I'm not that big of a proponent. I would just like to see it altered. I would like to see them integrated together i think i think both of them are equally as important and i think that conventional mainstream medicine is is doing oh gosh i'm going to take an ass whooping for this but i think they're doing a job that they're not really qualified to do right they're right. over trained for what they're seeing and that's causing big problems i don't think it's necessarily as villainous as people think it is i just think we're seeing the wrong practitioners first Nah, I'm going on yep. a limb. You can beat me with a branch later. That's, right. <laughs> That's all right. I liked it. <laughs> well, um, I have sort of a weird well, perspective on it too. So my, you know, my well, perspective is very different. You know, I think than than an average person. You know, I think a little bit. You've been, you've been heading to the doctor since you were since you were young. Yes, yeah, I, mean, I was um, born. Yeah. Yep. Um, and some but, of know, them were stunk, and some of them were awesome. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's very much in the. You know, like he said, how sad is that, right? That all these people, you know, all these physicians, you know, healers are there at this convention and a lot of their hands are tied. That, man, that would just fume me. I would just be so irritated to know that there's all these things that are showing all these amazing results and, you know, that are outside of the scope of practice that I could actually do legally, right? Right. That's an outcome, right. man. These people spent lots and lots of money to become this level of practitioner and then to find out that you couldn't incorporate things that your hands were tied, that would be extremely annoying. And and it's funny because um, as we were talking about that, it reminded me um, of several times when I went to the doctor and either we fired him or he fired us. I don't remember. It's probably a cooler (laughs) story to say that he fired us. So that makes it more funny. But anyway, I hadn't ever thought, I hadn't thought of his name and I couldn't remember what his name was. But during the show, I remembered it was Dr. Rosh Tirandas. So I just pulled it up. He's in Plano, and I remember asking him. He's still there, and, you know, I'm sure doing a great job making tons of money. But I remember mm-hmm. kind of feeling um, disillusioned a little bit about, like, I don't know, about them rushing in and not having time. Like, I just didn't – I thought that however long it took me to talk was how long he was going to stay in there and talk to me, like, years ago, <laughs> 20 years ago or whatever, right? Like, um, right, right. And, and didn't didn't really realize and I remember asking why for whatever health issue it was. And I remember getting this like kind of like roundabout like blah 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 like you know or like how can I, you know, like you know, vitamins or well, you know, you can take your daily vitamin. I I remember I don't remember what the issue was <laughs> that I had, but I remember going and so we kinda of, we kinda of thought he was quacky because he it was like he didn't you know, he didn't really say what what I wanted to hear. And now right, looking right. back, it's more like or what you thought was he, expected. He wasn't right. right. Yeah. But he wasn't, he wasn't equipped to do that. He didn't have That's the time saying. to do that. They're, we're seeing the wrong he practitioners, right? He there should be levels. The, yeah. That you he, be. he didn't have know. the ability to be able to, to give me what I wanted. And I, so I kind of just dismissed it as, you know, quirky or weird or something, but it wasn't really that. And um, I'm sure that happens a lot. I'm sure people think yeah. that all the time, and they're frustrated. And I was frustrated. But, you know, well, Look just, at how many people. We were just talking about this morning, how many people don't realize who can prescribe and who can't prescribe. I mean, yeah. it doesn't mean that someone's motivation necessarily is that. But, you know, just even that simple premise of what your practitioner or your physician can actually do or cannot do. You know, you kind of need to know that philosophy so, you know, it sounded like Dr. Cole goes runs through a, a, a myriad of problems before he ever sends somebody or recommends somebody to go to someone who could prescribe, right? So that's right. ideal. That's awesome sauce to know, but there are natural practitioners out there that will, you know, keep you far and far away from pharmaceuticals, even if you may need them. And so it's really important. You almost have to interview your practitioner, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. What are you willing you to do? do? I, Where? How do you start this? And You know what I'm saying? And right? I do believe, it, uh, does Dr. Cole, he has a free phone consultation, doesn't he? Because does. you actually he have to be accepted into his program. I loved that. I, I loved know. that, right? So he might obviously recognize, you know, I mean, he's super and crazy smart. So 
he might, you know, recognize, listen, you know, this is this is not the best place for you. I love no. that. That right? someone would be willing to tell you that. You know what I'm saying? I bet that is I bet Dr. smoking um, cool. I bet I bet Dr. Red would be the same way, you know? Well he did. He told us that, remember? Remember I was that's why I loved him was because he made that very clear off the front that he had you know, places that he would send people that he knew were beyond his scope of practice and, and right, needed right, right, pharmaceuticals. Right. And it sounds like that interview with Dr. Cole probably is very much that same paradigm, which, yay, right. I love that. Yeah, that's I love so, it. That's and so functional. <laughs> it really is. It is so functional, <laughs> right? I'm such a um, dork. <laughs> so the, I guess I owe Dr. Arash Pirandaz an apology. So if you're listening or, or you know him, I do. I owe him an apology, but... At the same time, I was asking the right questions, and I was wanting functional medicine just the back wrong person. then. Just to I, the I just wrong didn't person. know. Yeah, I was just asking to the wrong person, you know, and I was going to the wrong person. And um, Ooh, we need to yeah, do I, a thing on defining your practitioner, right? Ooh, what yeah. kind of practitioner do you really need? That's right. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. Defining your practitioner, oh, that's our next piece. Although Love I don't it. think you can okay. ever go wrong starting with functional, right? Okay, so next week, because we're, what are we, we're getting close on time here, right? Ooh, yeah, five minutes. Oh, five minutes. Okay. <laughs> no, you know, we're, nobody's listening live, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is a podcast. This is an iTunes show now, baby. We're big time. <laughs> Woo-hoo. <laughs> oh. Hold on, I'm typing something. You start talking. Oh, God. Uh. So Where should we, we go to on? next week? What are you typing? So next week, which oh, we actually God. have already interviewed, I'm doing your next week deal. So next week we have Dr. Jolene Brighton. Oh, my gosh. That was a pre-recorded show, and she is just amazing. She's somebody that, it, yeah, absolutely. It is the right is hubba hubba on show, is it not? <laughs> That's it right. That's going to be our Valentine's Day program, right? But she talks about hormones show. and libido. Right? Anytime uh-huh. you mention libido or sex drive, all thyroid patients yep. go, oh, Ooh. are you kidding right. me? It oh. takes so much energy to do that. Uh, <laughs> do we have to talk about it even? Can't we just forget about it? <laughs> oh, but it's but it so is- sad, right? We see so many people that have serious marital issues and, you know, I mean, gotten even gotten divorced. I mean, let's, let's face it, uh, a marriage without a healthy sex, life is a struggle and you know so she gets into that and she's absolutely fabulously amazing um there's a gorgeous picture of her on her site she has fabulous hair that's a that's a shout out to joanna my daughter with the beautiful curly hair but she was amazing right so we already know (laughs) we already know so good (laughs) so you you definitely have to listen to the next week's show it's it's going to be fantastic she really was yes and she hit on some she had some good points and, and uh, had some good tips for us, so it really was good. And, and lots of recommendations. About, lots yeah, lots we, of helpful we recommendations. Talked about, we talked about a little bit about, um, you know, postpartum thyroiditis, thyroiditis and um I love the way you say that. I know. I, I do it every time, and I'm like, oh, I said it wrong. And so uh, <laughs> um, so we, we talked about some really great stuff, so it's a really good show. Plus, she was just a lot of fun. I really dug her. Same thing with I Esther. Do. I mean, you know, same thing with Jill Carnahan. I mean, I just really love pretty much all of our guests. I mean, Dr. Cole. Uh, me was so too. Fun. And he laughed with us. He was so good, you know, and uh, he's headed back downstairs to work. So I just, you know, after his nap, it ain't. To learn more, yes. <laughs> to learn more, yes. <laughs> yes, okay. So, so, so next week we've got that covered, and we know where to find um, Dr. Will Cole. We've done that. And as always, a very big thank you to our listeners. Please share your Thyroid Thriver journey with us at thyroidnation.com. I promise I'm about to to post or publish a new story. Um, Dawn Holly is her name. I've been talking about it for a couple months, and, I've, and I'm backed up with Thyroid Thriver story, so I will be getting them out there. But whether you're healed or not, it's more about the journey, and your journey helps other people. So um, we'd love to hear your story. It's It yeah. really does help other people. So. So that's why we and you don't have so. to be healed to write it, right? Because it's the no, do's and don'ts no. and this worked and that that, that no. really helps no. so many people. Yeah. You know, it's, not a, it's not a thriver healed story, right? Because healing is really a journey until we until we keel over and 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 go on to our further journeys 
We're we're constantly yep. on that journey, on the thriving journey. Yes. Please be sure to check out our new skin and thyroid care line, Thyroid Nation Essentials at thyroidnation.com. Dana and I created this with lots of love and light, just really more simple, healthy, without all the you know BPA and, and different chemicals that can be very disruptive to people with metabolic disorders. We tried to make it as clean as we possibly could, synthetic flea synthetic free fabulously simple beneficial skin care um that are that are known to help specifically we incorporated essential oils that specifically were known to help with thyroid uh thyroid complaints uh so lots of things to check out there especially love potion and really love potion isn't really a love potion but it's meant to encourage touch and you know uh, there's lots of ways to get your hubba hubba on and there's aphrodisiac essential oils but really just the art of touch and touch. creating an, mm-hmm. an, an intimate nice. environment yeah yeah, yeah. so right. Dan and i hope you enjoy them please check them out at thyroidnation.com yep and make sure to follow us at thyroidnation.com on facebook we have a facebook page we have a facebook group hoshies and graves where you'll see the next week's um Thyroid Nation radio guest and tips and lots of support. So check that group out. We're also on Twitter and and Pinterest. I never say Pinterest. We're on Pinterest. Instagram. Periscope. Well, we used to be and we're going to be. Oh, my promise. God. <laughs> You're all over the place. Someday, yeah. I know, I know. Sorry. Uh, Dana and okay. I always want to remind you that go ahead. The wellness is a no. joke. <laughs> and takes continual maintenance evaluation. We are a pair today. Always make sure to uh-huh. listen to your own body and be mindful of what it is telling you. Yes. Be mindful, be mindful, because everybody is different. So listen to your own body. This is Dana, your Thyroid Nation Green Topeka from Costa Rica. And Tiffany of Grateful Garden Up is. Bringing the collective <laughs> voice of thyroid thrivers worldwide so that together, united we heal. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hey, it's Flo, and this is my impression of a politician. I believe in the people and their cars and progressive and the fact that you yes you can plug in snapshot to save even more money for being a good driver i also believe in sasquatch but more as a joke but also kind of seriously safe drivers save with snapshot from progressive i approve of this message and sasquatch if you are real you can totally be my running mate progressive casualty insurance company snapshot not available in all states